I have about 800 unreleased songs, Sarkodie. But I can get close to like 800. 800 songs? Yes. Unreleased. Unreleased. Now let's proceed with today's news report. Ghanaian actor Majid Michel has asserted that a good movie will depend on a good producer. Speaking in an interview, the critically acclaimed actor revealed that producers bring talents together to make a good movie. He said more in this interview. So the producer is the one who identifies who a good scriptwriter is, okay. who a good director is, who a good cinematographer is, who a good editor is, okay. who a good actor is. Okay. So he, the producer, brings them together to produce a good film. Otherwise, you have all these talents on their own, and they don't know how to come together mm. to let it happen. Mm. Is a producer who is the judge of the talent yeah. that identifies all these other talents mm -hmm. and brings the talents together mm. to make a good film. Majid Michel has put out a warning to pastors who lie to their congregation about their problems and whether it is over or not. Pastors should stop telling the congregation that troubles are over. That is a lie. Your troubles will only be over when you were growing up. When you were, when you were, when you were, when you were feeding on a breast milk. Mm. When you got to the age where you want to stop the breast milk, do you know that at that age, whether you were two years old, you go through depression. Children go through depression. Dep depression is not a bad thing. Mm. Depression is your inner spirit. In the Hit yourself in your mm. conscious mind that where we are is it's not good. Let's move on. It's only bad when you prolong it. So when your body is not responding to that indication, then you go into depression. Mm. That means depression. Depression is basically a reality in front of you that you are unable to affect. So there's a situation there that you're not doing anything about. You're not trying to even solve it. That is where stress comes from. People mm. say I'm stressed from hard work. Mm. No. Hard work never gives you stress. Mm. Stress arises when there's a problem to be solved and you're doing nothing about it. Mm. Immediately you, you take the first step to start solving the problem. Yeah. Your, stress, your stress starts going off. Okay. okay. Now, that's same as depression. So even at a two-year-old age, you went into depression when you had to stop the breast milk. Mm. Because you don't want to stop because you have to grow. Mm. And after you go to that stage where your teeth started falling, falling off, down teeth, or six, seven years, you went into another depression because you feel you know, that adult teeth is coming. It's depression. So you realize they start crying a lot. They get, they get very grumpy when mm -hmm. you wake them up. They don't want to sleep at mm. night. All this depression. More in the news today, one half of the defunct hip-life duo, Achiame, Ochiame, uh, Kofi Ochiame, I beg your pardon, is not enthused about BBC's hip-life documentary. The artist registering his displeasure about the project described it as misleading and non-factual. The 27-minute documentary published on BBC Africa's YouTube page chronicles the genesis of the hip-life genre, its evolutions, influences and impact. This morning on Daybreak Hits, Ochiami Kofi and other veteran record producers like Zap Mallet and Abraham Ohinijan shared their view on the outcome of the programme. You see, I put this on social media and people come at me, is it because you were not mentioned? Yes, it's because I wasn't mentioned. Yes, it's because I wasn't mentioned. Because this is my life work. I told my children what I did. And now there's a documentary without your father's name in it. Then I'm alive in front of my family. No. I would not keep quiet. I mean, you cannot. You Listen. The facts are there. Andy, did you know Achame actually was the first to actually put our music on a compact disc and put in stores for people to buy it? Mm -hmm. Go back and check. Check the date. Whose music went on CD for stores first? Commercializing this thing, Achame played a big role. Cassette. Even with the music, the sound. Okay, that's Zamalek. 
thanks be to him created. That 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 song, the Mesonaba song, even before Mesonaba, we, we had Brebro Bajma, which was also equally big. The directions that gave us, that, that you know, when he heard us and everything, the creating of the sound that he gave us and, and all, that actually changed the face of even the hip life industry in, in this in this country. Popular music, if I should put it that way. And then you are able to tell a story for almost 30 minutes, or is it 30 minutes plus? Mm, uh, almost then, 30 minutes. And then all of these facts are missing. And you, you call it a hip life documentary. No, it is not. Because it wasn't the fact that I couldn't access people. Fortunately, because of my position, I am able to talk to a lot of people and, you know, and, and get information. But I'm doing this on my budget. I also have to feed my children. I have to look after myself. Who's paying for it? But when I finish, the chances are I'm also going to get pushback like what this documentary, even though I may get more of the story right, there will still be some people that will say, oh, no, you didn't include Mahoney P, and you didn't do this, and you didn't do that. But the, the bottom line is nobody's paying for it. I have to do it on my own budget. So let's not complain. The fact is, somebody spent money doing this, sending a crew down, running around to get this thing done. They didn't entirely get the story right. I understand even Zap was supposed to be in it. Um, but, uh, you know, um, for some reason, he wasn't in it. Uh, like I said, I personally sat down for a very long time with them, um, trying to give them the entire history of what I know, but a very small portion was used. They have a They wanted to produce a particular kind of documentary. So, if we want a very detailed documentary about hip life, we need to make an effort to to, to get it done. We, it needs to be financed. These things don't come cheap. We don't take our art seriously in this country. Yet we complain about it when others come and do it. We all complained about the Afrobeats documentary, and we are complaining about this. And if I do one, they'll complain about it, and. It'll be the same thing, but I would have had to do it on my own budget. Yeah, I just saw a little snippet of it on Facebook. It wasn't the full thing, actually. Uh, that's what I saw. I've seen. I haven't actually seen the whole documentary. Yet. But w w what have you heard? Have you heard the commentary on it? Um, I've heard a few people speak about it, that it's not actually factual. It's not. It's not. It's not really like it doesn't address the facts and that kind of thing, you know, but, and, uh, but well, me, I, I think it's, it's, for me, documentaries is, is a story. It's a story that somebody is telling from his point of view. So that's how we see it. And so that's how he's, he's made it. I mean, it's up, it's up to other uh, people to, to uh, also come up with uh, their own stories and tell it the way they have to tell it and tell it, uh, if, if they have to tell it their way, uh, uh, that that's how I see it. But apart from that, I haven't seen it myself actually to determine what it what it actually looks like. In in the case of Ape Life, well, since you've not seen it, I cannot ask too much. However, your name or you were not even in, interviewed. Are you disappointed? No, no, I'm not disappointed. Being a Ghanaian, I'm not disappointed at all because I know that's how we are. Somebody tells it from Ghana, the story from Ghana. This is how it's going to look like. So I'm not disappointed. It's a Ghanaian nature. So me. As a Ghanaian, I'm not disappointed at all, not in the least, because I am not surprised at the outcome of the, uh, of the documentary. Seriously, I'm not at all. I'm not at all disappointed as a Ghanaian. That's my honest feeling about it. And uh, I so side with Zap Mallet because that's how people in the industry are. So, Ochiame, I don't think you can sue the BBC. I think you should sue the people who make our data available the structures need to be in place but anyway still in the news well Ghanaian rapper Sarkodie has revealed that he has about 800 songs he is yet to release speaking in an interview on YFM he explained that many of these were recorded at a time he was putting together his third studio album Psychology. The rapper ended up putting 30 songs on the LP and it has hits like Special Someone featuring Burner Boy, one of my favorites, and the late AKA Down on One, Ponder Ting, Bounce, and Devil in Me, 
Which of his tracks are your favorites? Well, Sakodia said that the songs are at various stages of completion. Some are done, some have single verse and chorus, while others have no chorus at all. Wait, Sakodia had 30 songs. Yes. Sakodia, why? First yeah. of why? Yeah, it was just an error. I think I was recording too much. Mm. Yes, I was recording too much. And I just felt like I knew myself if I if I heard that music, it would never come out. Like till yeah. now I have like yeah, I, I see Sack Nation always going yeah. off. Yeah, I swear, I swear, like I have from that time till now, I still have almost like. Oh God, I don't want to exaggerate, but yeah, I, want, I, want, I really want to know the number. <laughs> but I can get close to like 800. 800 songs. Yes, unreleased. Unreleased. Some with with one verse, no chorus. Some with chorus. Some full songs. Yeah. Mm. So at that time, it was just me recording a bunch of songs, and I just had to like, you know, put them out there. Mm. You know, because I record a lot now. Now my pace is a bit slow down, but mm. um, yes, it was just me having a bunch of songs. That era was just me trying to put something out. Ochiami Kwame has commented on the just ended 65th Grammy Awards and how artists from Africa represented the continent. According to the rapper, he noted that if he were to attend the event, he would have dressed in a kente cloth, accessorized with beads, and a boombox that will be playing Adowa tunes. With the traditional African look at the awards, the artist claimed he would have made it impossible for other artists to be looked at twice. He also expressed his admiration for the musicians who were invited to the Grammy event and stated that if the same offer to build connections had been made to him, he would have gladly accepted it. Um, Stone Boy and uh, Adam greeting at the Grammy, I said, wow. Mm. How did this happen? I didn't hear of it. Mm. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I woke up to it. I honestly didn't follow the whole Twitter, obviously, Hula Balu on who should have won mm. and the trolls. But I, I thought it was an amazing opportunity because I, if I had the opportunity to go to the Grammys, I would jump on the next flight mm. to mm. go and spend time with all those amazing artists that I look up to. And seize the opportunity to try to see if I can get a telephone number or two so I can get in some features <laughs> mm. and take pictures for my exactly. social media mm. and connect, find management and find plugs and try to see mm. if I can have a real connection with someone that can take my music to the next level. Mm -hmm. There's no way that I would not have taken advantage of that opportunity so and i Hi, my name is Ochami Kwame. i'm from ghana i was going to ask you my i was going to ask you how would you have dressed for the occasion maybe how would you have dressed for the occasion i would have gone in my kente thank you in my henema with my beats all around and then and get like a like a boom player a boom box and be playing that one. Mm? Yeah, yeah. Hey. Who is this? Exactly. Since hello, hello, what's your name? Where are you coming from? Exactly. Since I cannot go with the whole ensemble, mm? yeah. I will have like a boom box following me. And you would have looked different. And then I'll go in my regal kente with gold everywhere. Mm. You know, nice. it would have been very difficult mm. for someone else to steal their shine. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> As for that, I can trust Ochiami Kwame. When it comes to our culture, he does paint a very good picture. Well, next year, we hope to see him on the Grammy red carpet. Ochiami Kwame has also asserted that adding melodies to a rap song makes it better. Drake, who does melodic rap? You see, see uh, you have to be careful when you say med melodic rap because, because in rap music, what we sort of call melody is, is a cadence. Okay. What the press call meter. Okay. You know, and the more melody you put in rap, the more difficult it is. M putting melody in rap means now the, the, the rap music is going to sit with the chord, sit in time, and be in key. So melodic rap is more difficult than regular rhythmized speeches. Okay. That we do. So do not lower, do not water down melodic rap because that is where rap is going. That's the future of rap. Okay. Because people speaking like Japan, some brother, lots of that, people screaming at us on records, it's not sexy anymore. Mm. People want to hear some melody so that even if they don't understand what you are saying, 
they can there's a certain symbiotic connection yeah. between the artist and because the of the artist. melodies more music in today's news report. High Life musician Kwabuna Kwabuna on Saturday, February 11, had his Valentine love concert dubbed the Vita Milk Love Night with Kwabuna Kwabuna at the National Theatre. It was a night fully packed with love songs from his repertoire and that of his friends. This is a report by my colleague Ibrahim Bembako, who was at the event. <laughs> The mood was set right by Image Bureau and it was all love songs at the Vitamil Love Night with Kwabna Kwabna. Kwabna Kwabna entreated patrons at the National Theatre on Saturday 11th of February to almost all his five albums. He didn't do this alone. He had his friends. Samini. Ethia. Sefa. Mr. Drew. Kwamina MP. And the legendary Pat Thomas. All on stage to thrill the patrons. Excited patrons had this to say about the concert. Was it as expected coming here? More than expected. The word expected is too small. If there's any other word we need to use to describe this show, this is fantastic. I mean, you could see the blend of the high life to the younger generation, hip life music, and to, to the older generation. And then you could see also reggae team something happening. I had so much fun. Thank you, Kwabna. I'll be expecting a lot next year. It was very much expected, yes. And you had a good time? Very good time. <laughs> I love Kwabna, Kwabna, so yes, it was expected. <laughs> did you have enough fun like you anticipated? Oh, yes, I did. I did. <laughs> and Kwabna, Kwabna, new name, Prince of Love Songs on the African Continent, was so elated and excited, the patrons were satisfied. So this evening, you did your body of work as a musician. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did quite a number. We did quite a number. I think we did about, about 24, 23 tracks. And finally today, well, he must be happy. On Tuesday, Louis Vuitton announced that Pharrell Williams will serve as the next creative director of the brand's menswear line, following in the footsteps of late Virgil Abloh. Louis Vuitton is delighted to welcome Pharrell Williams as its new men's creative director. His first collection for Louis Vuitton will be revealed next June during Men's Fashion Week in Paris. The brand wrote on Instagram and in a press release confirming the news, adding, quote, Pharrell Williams is a visionary whose creative universes expand from music to art and to fashion, establishing himself as a cultural global icon over the past 20 years. The way in which he breaks boundaries across the various worlds he explores aligns with Louis Vuitton's status as a cultural mason, reinforcing its values of innovation, pioneer spirit and entrepreneurship. Ablo, who was beloved by the fashion industry as well as his friends in the music industry, including Kanye West, Drake, Rihanna, Frank Ocean and more, died on November 2021 after a private battle with a rare aggressive cancer. He was 41 years old. May he rest fashionably in peace. And that's how we wrap up his news at one. But here's a message from our almighty Betway. World Cup finish, but action still day. 
Bet a minimum of 10 Ghana cities on Betway Aviator and stand a chance of winning amazing and exciting prizes, including vouchers, smartphones, and many more. Sign up and play at betway.com.gh. And of course, terms and conditions apply, regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet the responsible way. No under 18. I'm Movi, the motivator. And of course, afternoon definition continues right here on Hits News at 1 with Nana Kwame Labi, the finest. And of course, many thanks to the production team, Arnold, DJ Fantastic, Noella, everybody, y'all.